Hi everyone, this is Kevin Dart from the Fastener Lab and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up your properties and export some G-code for the plasma cutter. Now this is the file that I'm going to cut, just a variety of shapes just to give you an example. And There's a few things that we need to check before we can get into generating our G-code to run the plasma CNC machine. One thing I want to make sure is down here I want to make sure that I'm working in inches. Another thing is I want to make sure that all my pieces are spaced properly. Now I recommend a half inch between pieces which will allow you to make certain cuts that will cut into your uh, lines to make your shapes nice and clean. And one way you can check your spacing is to come up here to analyze distance. And down here I'm going to turn my snaps on. So I'm going to go to on snap and just make sure my near snap is on. And then I can just generally take a look, snap to each side. And up here it's going to come up. Now we're a little close there. So I'll just kind of move this guy out of the way just because I have the space. And this looks pretty close here. So I'll just hit enter and do the same command. And yeah, we're pretty close there, so I can also move this shape out of the way as well. Alright, so that's just one thing to be aware of, and you want to make sure you're in inches so nothing uh, gets out of whack with the uh, uh, G-code or anything like that. Now, what we use to generate our G-code is RhinoCam, which you can only use RhinoCam on the PCs in the Digital Fab Lab. So in RhinoCam we can come up here and we can just turn the mill on and these windows will pop up. I don't really need to worry about the tool window right here. I'm just going to close that out and expand my uh, RhinoCam milling software over here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the machine. just want to double click this, make sure that it says 3 axis, the number of axis right here. Uh, and that's all fine. We don't really need to play around with that too much. I'm just going to hit OK. Next thing we need to do is we need to look at our post script here. I'm going to double click that. Now, if this is your first time using RhinoCam, standard will come up or default. We want to change where we're going to find our post processor. And I'm just going to click this three dot button right here and find the Digifab folder that's on the desktop of all the PCs in the uh, Digifab room. So here I have the Digifab folder. I'm going to hit OK. And then up here I can select two different post processors. I'm going to make sure that Torchmate is selected. So for the Plasma CNC table, which is a Torchmate table, we want to select Torchmate. Now the Torchmate software also uses a specific extension. Now here I already have it. It's a .fgc. You want to make sure you add that if you don't see it. So you can just hit Add New. Come over here and type in .fgc. And we're going to hit OK. And then I can hit OK there. Now the next is the stock, which is essentially if we think about a milling machine, it's going to be what are we cutting things away from. So I'm just going to double click that and you see it's going to kind of make this ghosted orange box around my material. Uh, I'm going to put this in perspective view so we can kind of see it a little bit better. Now I'm going to just click copy model bounding box which is the box around all my shapes. And I'm just going to give this just random old height whatever. If you want, even want to do the thickness of your material that's fine. We just want to make sure that this is a positive number and that the stock is the same as our bounding box. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. We, we've got that. Now I'm actually going to go back and make that a bigger number just to show you some things that the program kind of automatically does. One thing, and the next is the setup. So I'm going to double click the setup. And you see how there was a coordinate system there, and then a second coordinate system showed up. I just want to make sure that those coordinate systems are aligned. 
and usually that is the default so once you see that you can hit OK or you can set them manually so I'm just gonna hit OK and so that's all good now I can start with my machine operations and the first thing I want to do is create a work zero so I'm gonna click work zero and now if I scroll around oh, I'm going to first set the, the work zero to somewhere on the stock box. So I'm going to hit that. And you can see how it automatically placed one way over here. Now I want this to be lined up with my world coordinate system. So I'm going to say lowest Z, which dropped it down. And then I'm going to say southwest corner. Now you can play around with these to get it to line up. But typically it's usually the southwest corner. And if you have a positive height on your stock box, it's going to be the lowest Z, so that it's all one sort of coordinate system right here. I'm going to hit Generate. Now the next is to actually start putting in our machine operations for what we're actually going to do for cutting. So I'm going to go back to Machine Operations, and then I'm going to click on 2-axis little down arrow and it's going to give me some options and I'm going to click profiling and then it's going to ask me first for my control geometry so I'm going to come back over here go to my top view and I'm just going to do all the big shapes first and really what I want to think about is what am, what do I want to cut inside what do I want to have cut outside because that's what we're going to do first. So actually, I'm going to cut what I want inside first, or any lines or anything like that. So as I can see here with this shape, I've got a circle inside another circle and some other shapes. Same with this pentagon. So I'm going to select those lines. And actually, I'm just going to do the circle first. So I'm going to... Well, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. I, I will actually select curves in regions first. So I'm just going to call select what's inside this circle here, and I'm going to hit enter. And so it kind of came up with these yellow lines. Now these yellow lines might not be exactly on the line you want. And the way we change that is we're going to come over here to tool and we're going to say edit create select tool hit that and then what i want for the plasma cnc is a v mill which is just a point you know it uh, the bit or the router bit comes down to a point and i'm just going to click save as new tool i don't need to really change any parameters so i'm going to save as new tool and i'm going to hit okay the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my cut parameters. I'm going to come over here and really for this section what I care about is am I going to use outside or inside for closed curves. So I'm going to select that and then it's going to ask me well what do I want outside or inside. And so I'm going to say these are inside curves right because what I want cut out of this shape is actually I want some sort of weird Swiss cheese looking thing. So I want a nice clean edge on all of these edges. So I'm going to say inside because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little kind of tail where it's going to start cutting so that I get a clean cut and not a kind of a big hole right where the plasma starts to cut. So then I can go to my cut levels. I'm just going to make sure that everything is zero here. Entry and exit. Now this is where I'm going to add my little tail uh, for approach or entry. I'm going to do lines and arcs. For the length, I'm just going to do zero. Now that length is what I can see over here in this diagram is this little green line. And then when I do engage, I'm going to do a radial so it kind of curves in. So it'll make a nice swooping curve. It, it just makes a nice clean edge. I'm going to leave that at a quarter of an inch. 
Now when it exits, I don't really care about that. It's just going to stop. So I'm going to hit none, and there will be none there. Uh, next I am going to go to advanced cut parameters. And really the only thing I care about is the arc fitting. Now I can change that to hundred thousandths just to make a nice sharper line. Uh, I can come over here to sorting. I can do minimum distance sorting in the lower left. The reason it's in the lower left is that's because where my home is. The next is the clearance plane. This is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to go absolute zero, absolute Z value here. I'm going to type in zero. This has more to do with the G code than anything, but just make sure that that's on zero. Uh, let's see. Feeds and speeds is something that we would change if we were actually using a, a milling machine, but we don't need to worry about that. And we've edited everything else. So we just can hit generate. And you can see here, if I look at this line, it brought in this little tail. This is the tail that I was talking about. It'll start cutting here, and it'll come in and start cutting that curve. So it'll actually be a really nice cut. And that's also a reason why we want to be half an inch away, so that there's enough room to have these little tails. Let's see, this is the problem area I was talking about earlier, but we have enough room there. So actually one thing I can do is I can actually edit uh, this. I'm going to go back and I'm going to select these other lines here because they're interior lines to do the same thing. I'm going to hit enter. I'm just going to hit regenerate. And oh, that moved them to the outside. So I will get rid of those. So I'm going to select. I'm actually just going to remove all because it's just easier to select the ones I want again. And I'll hit enter. And I'll hit generate. So I've got these interior lines. So I'm going to actually just copy and paste that whole operation there. And I'm going to double click it and remove those lines and then select the exterior lines. So I'm going to select all of these guys. I'm going to hit enter. Now what I want to do is, the only thing I really want to change is the outside because my entry and exit is going to be the same. Everything else is really going to be the same, same tool. But I want those little tails to be on the outside of the line so that we get a nice clean cut for those shapes. So I'm going to hit generate and then we can see, we can zoom in and there's our little tail there. Now the last operation I have to do are for these lines. And if I don't want any tails on anything, I'll just show you how to do that with these lines. So I'm going to copy and paste that last operation, double click it, remove all of these lines. And then I'm going to select those interior lines. Hit enter. And then in my cut parameters, uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's see. Let's generate them and maybe it will move those tails to the outside edge. Nope, still didn't do it. So it's really, it's reading the, this line, it's saying this line starts here and that's why it's putting the tail on the inside edge. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to come in here and just say I don't want an entry line. I'm going to hit generate. And there we go. So it'll just start right there. Now it'll leave me with a little bit of a hole there, but I'm willing to deal with that. So once it's all done, I can just look at my uh, 
Make sure all my operations are looking good, double check everything. And I can select this setup, I can right click, and then I'm going to hit post. And I'm going to save that, I'm just going to save this to the desktop right now. We're using the proper post, and I'm going to hit post. And then it's going to pop up all the information in uh, Notepad. And this is our G code. And as we can see, there's not a lot of lines there. But everything is what we're looking for. We're looking our first, no matter what, it's going to tell the machine that we're going to move at 100 inches per minute. Now this can be adjusted when we're running it in the uh, in the software for the Torchmate. Um, we can change this for different materials. I'll show that in a different tutorial. But you know, this is really what we're looking for. We're only we only need X and Y movements, uh, I and J for circles and curves, and that's looking good so far. So I can just close that out. It's saved to the desktop. And that's the basics of setting up a file for plasma cutting. So enjoy.